we are going to cover 10 treadmill tips, starting from safety, going all the way through to efficiency and workouts. My name is Margaret Martin. I'm a registered physical therapist, certified strength and conditioning specialist. And I'm doing this video because so many people have treadmills and they don't make the most of them as well. Sometimes they're not as safe as they should be. So let's start with safety. So you'll notice that all your treadmills come with some sort of safety cord. They're made to be used just like your safety belts in your car. Chances are you'll never need them, hopefully so, but that's what it's there for just in case. So first thing I want you to do is I want you to test it just to see how it reacts. Some of them, you, they're worn around the wrists. Some of them, them are clipped onto your clothing. So you want to be able to judge how far you need to be and what is it like when it's running? Because otherwise it's kind of scary. So I'm gonna get it going at about the pace that I'm used to walking. And then I just wanna observe and see what happens when I pull and I go, oh, it didn't suddenly stop, it stopped slowly. So next thing we wanna do is go, how does that feel if I'm actually on it and walking? And if I got distracted or something happened and how far would I be before, whoa, pretty far. So it's not even gonna stop if I'm coming off the edge. So that means I'm gonna need to hold it a little bit closer so that if I go too far, it stops. But I'm still in the safety zone. I'm like, whoa, that was a little bit challenging on my balance, but I know it would actually stop. My treadmill is about 10 years old. So, you know, this cord is getting a little bit loose, but that's a really important thing for you to check is just how your, your treadmill stops and how you are working within those confines in your space. The other safety tip is what's on your feet. And so very important is just to create a double knot. And if you, my laces are barely tight enough, but oftentimes when I'm um, training with clients, their laces will untie when they're on the treadmill. It's just a really nasty place to get caught up with your laces. So make sure you double knot them. Now, in terms of the actual footwear itself, something you wanna think about is most treadmills come fairly cushioned. And so it's not as critical that you have a really cushioning shoe and actually I would encourage you to just have a very stable walking shoe. So if you enjoy a shoe that you have and you know it's a walking shoe and it's supportive and has a heel and has a lace up and a flexible bottom, those are critical things to have um, to start your walking program. If you're going to convert to running, then obviously a running shoe would be a really good um, shoe to have as it is designed to help you more through a run than a walk. All right, tip number two. With tip number two, arm swing. Arm swing is so very critical. I talk to so many clients that tell me that when they're on the treadmill that they are constantly holding on. Well, if you look at sprinters when they run, sprinters will dictate their leg speed very much by their arm speed and so if you're always holding on, that means that you're never going to be able to walk as fast as you potentially could on a treadmill. Now, the other thing that happens if I hold on, all the motions coming from the waist down. Whereas when we walk with our arms, we get this beautiful rotation and opposite pelvis and shoulder girdle motion. Very important. Now, many, many people say, but that's way too scary, Margaret. So you start at the slowest pace that you're comfortable and you start by letting go of one hand only. Now, the other thing is I don't want this hand to be down here because if you feel like you need to hang on, it's already too far away from the bar to hold on. So it's also a good habit just to have a nice bend in your elbow and get that bend that's comfortable and after 20 to 30 seconds, switch arms. The 
opposite arm and leg should be coming forward at the same time. So you'll notice every time the right leg comes forward, my left arm will come forward and vice versa. Oops, so now I gotta get it going, there we go. And so just giving yourself permission to get comfortable with that. And if you feel like you have to hold on once in a while, that's okay. But then give yourself at least 20 seconds of, you know, braving it and with your safety belt on that you are trying to let go of both hands. And again, they're going to be close. You might even just be grazing the bars, the handles that you have on your treadmill so that if you need to just hang on again, that's totally fine and just do so. All right, let's move on to tip number three. So for tip number three, I'm just going to actually bring the pace down a little bit. I'm also going to bring the incline or the percent grade to zero. So I'm just starting at a really nice, easy pace. With your warm up, that's what it should be. It should be the way you would just walk out the door and you might, you know, reach the first um, block of your walk where it's just a nice, easy pace before you start to increase your walking pace. Now, a few things you can do, however, is just explore what it feels like to push off a little bit more. And you'll notice as I push off that for myself, I'm feeling like, oh, I can, you know, feel the articulation through my feet a little bit more, feeling my foot roll through the ball of my foot. I am also feeling like, oh, I'm taking a longer step and making my leg go behind me a little bit more, which gives me a nice opening through the front of the hip. So without having to do any formal stretching, you are actually getting a nice little stretch happening through the foot. Now, another last point is, you know, I've mentioned warming up by being aware of the push off, but I also want you to be aware of lifting the front or your toes off. Because when we walk on treadmills all the time, our feet get a little bit lazy because it's perfectly flat surface. We don't have to have to worry about tripping on anything. But if you go into the real world and there's like little, you know, raises in the sidewalk or little, you know, rocks and, you know, debris, you want to make sure that you're just in the habit of lifting your toes. And so making those muscles in the... Uh, top of your lower leg, um, be more active is just an important part of fall prevention. So just another little tip there that you can incorporate in your warm up. All right, moving to number four. So tip number four, duration, how long to walk for? It's a question people often ask. So I always say, well, how long have you been walking? or in your neighborhood, you know, or around the track or at the gym. And if they tell me, well, I haven't walked in a whole long time, I go, then we start with one minute. And I know it sounds like really low, but it would much rather you do a minute in the morning, a minute in the afternoon, a minute in the evening. And you go, wow, that felt okay. You know, just get really comfortable with the treadmill. And then the next day, add a minute to all of them. It won't take long, you know, if you think, then by day two, you're already doing six minutes. By day three, you're doing nine minutes. By day four, you know, so it just keeps multiplying. So it, before too long, you're thinking, oh, wow, I, did, I didn't sign up for that many minutes. But you will be quickly, you know, doing a half an hour walk, just broken up throughout the day. And then it will be easier to bring the, those walk times together, should you decide to do so, or to keep them at separate times of the day because movement throughout the day is a great thing, whether you, you know, choose to do it before your meals or break it up, you know, morning and early evening, whatever works for your schedule and your life, just getting some movement and some regular walking. So that's the first thing is just start where you're at and then, you know, build up your duration gradually. All right, tip number five, it's all about intensity these days. It's like, 
you know, you might have heard HIT, high intensity interval training. Well, that's a great goal and it will be one of the workouts we talk about. But for right now, the intensity I want you to aim for is that during your warm up, you're at a comfortable pace. And then after, you know, you've built, you know, even if you're doing a three minute walk, that first minute is your warm up. The second minute might be your intensity and the third minute is your cool down. So that intensity minute means you're just walking a little bit faster than your warm up or cool down. That you're just going, wow, that's, you know, that's five miles an hour or 0.5 miles an hour faster, I should say, than I was doing yesterday. And just feeling that it's giving you a challenge, you're having to breathe a little bit harder, that you, um, despite the fact that you, you might be a little bit uncomfortable, that you're going, oh, I could do this, I'm, I'm, eight, I'm managing well, but it's just a little bit more intense. And that's how we get stronger and that's how we get faster. So let's move on to tip number six. Tip number six is about speed. And so when it comes to speed, we want to make sure that we're just working with one variable that we change at a time. So we're going to make sure that, that the percent grade is back down to zero and we just focus on the speed. Now, I want you to keep track of your incremental changes over time so that you can just like pat yourself on the back and go, wow, that was really great over the last two weeks. You know, I went from walking 1.7 miles an hour to 2.5 miles an hour, whatever the change is, is really great to see. And that allows you to also monitor your speed changes. So make sure you're making note, whether it's in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, because sometimes the machines will just interchangeably change it. And you might go, wow, that feels so slow. It's because you're looking at miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. So just things like that, um, that are important for you to, to help you continue on your journey of gaining speed. Now, we're going to talk about when you talk, when you gain speed, we'll explore this further in the workouts, but you could gain speed with 20 second intervals, just little bursts, just to see how it feels going that fast. Or you can go, well, I'm really wanting to build up my cardiovascular health. And I want to be able to walk with my buddy who's walking in an hour, 15 minutes, and he's able to do a certain route in a certain time. And so you go, okay, I'm aiming for that. And so you might want your speed intervals to be longer, which means they will probably not be as fast as a short speed interval. And again, we'll look at that in the workouts, but that's how you play with your speed. Tip number seven. So it's all about beats per minute. It's all about music. It's all about having something that keeps you moving. The studies show it works. I know it works. I, I mean, I hate to run, but putting on the right music at the right rhythm, I can go so much faster if the beats are just there to make me move. We all love to move. It's primitive. We have been designed as a human race to move to the beat. You know, there's studies showing children dancing with an adult that are moving at the same rhythm to the music. They are happier babies than children dancing with somebody that is not moving at the same rhythm. So as I say, it's just, in born with a, in within us to move to music. So when you're looking to warm up, you want a pace that is right for you. And you're usually looking, you know, within 80 to 100 beats per minute. When you get into your workout phase, then you're wanting to have the music match the tempo that you're looking for. So bringing it up to, you know, above 100, somewhere between 110, even 120 to 140, all depending on your experience as a walker and your fitness level. And then when you, um, you know, some walkers will walk as fast as 150 beats per minute, um, also dependent on your leg length. So then if you're moving into increasing your intensity, such as into a light run, a jog, then you're looking at, you know, 155 and above beats per minute. And so, you know, great time to explore music. And, and, you know, today with technology, you can just put songs and beats per minute and you'll have stuff that comes up that I'm sure you'll find that will keep you moving. 
Tip number eight is how to play with your percent grade or the incline and decline of the treadmill. And so you want to start with finding and initiating after your warm up with the pace that you're just really comfortable with. So you don't want to be going really fast because you're going to be introducing a variable which is going to make things a little harder, which is the percent grade. So if you've never used grade at all, you're going to go up to one. You're going to do it for 10 seconds. And then after the 10 seconds, you're going to come back down to zero. See how your body feels. After 10, 20 seconds or a minute, you can go to the second grade and come back down. So much safer just to go up and down and up and down than to just stay at a grade. So the biggest mistake I see people do, which, you know, they start getting um, a lot of issues with their ankles and hips and knees, is just staying on a steep incline or any incline for a prolonged period of time. So um, again, just play with the grade at a pace that you're comfortable walking with. Write down, you know, what you did that day for how many seconds, what percent grade, so that if your body is happy with it, you're going, great, that's my baseline, that's where I can start. And if your body's not happy with it, then you'll know, oh, I just overdid it, as opposed to just saying, oh, I don't know what I did exactly, and I don't know how to change it. So um, again, your percent grade is a variable that you get to play with with the treadmill, but really important just to document and work with it at a pace that you're comfortable with initially. So now we're moving on to number nine, and that's our cool down. So when it comes to the cool down, we start bringing everything down. We start bringing our percent grade back down to zero. We bring our speed down to a comfortable walking pace. And hopefully you also allow your full upper body to relax and cool down. Because if you've been holding on, you know, through maybe some of the harder um, portions of it, you're going to be holding a lot of tension through your neck and shoulders. And so you want to just let everything relax. Um, go back to, you know, the one arm swing and the opposite arm swing. And eventually you might find you, you're not holding on anymore. That you could just allow, you know, the, this confidence to just know that your hands are there if you need them to be there. And with time, you will keep developing that confidence to allow yourself to have an opposite arm swing or reciprocal arm swing while walking on the treadmill. After you've done your time on the treadmill, your muscles are well warmed up. And so this is a great time to just stretch. Um, you might be familiar with stretches such as your quadricep stretch. That's a nice stretch to do. Just being able to hold on um, one foot, keeping your abdominals nice and tight as you do that. If this feels like it's a little bit too intense, I have a lot of other variations of it, but I'm just going to use the um, treadmill um, arm that I have. That's going to allow me just to hook the, my foot into it, and that's going to give me a nice quadricep stretch. So if you work with your environment, that's kind of nice. It's um, built in. If I wanted to do a hip flexor stretch, I could place one foot up on the treadmill and then come in, and that's going to help with the stretch of the hip flexor. If I do that on the other side, so you can see my foot's pointing forward and I'm just going in and getting this lovely stretch in here. And then lastly, people often think about stretching um, their calf muscle, but I also like to stretch the, um, the front of the foot when I was saying to lift up your toes. So just allowing the top of your foot to be resting on the treadmill and getting a nice stretch through the lower shin area and top of your foot. And then lastly, and you can do this just stepping right off the edge of your treadmill. And that's just giving yourself a nice little calf stretch and just doing that by having your toes on the back of the treadmill and your heel resting on the floor. So um, if you even just have 30 seconds to hold each stretch, that's great. 
If you have a longer time to hold the stretch, even better. Um, your static stretches are best done after the workout. And, and if you don't feel particularly tight, you could, and you don't have time to do all these stretches, you can save one stretch per day and just kind of monitor how your body's doing. And if you go, wow, I'm way tighter in the muscles in the front here than in the calf muscle, you want to make sure that you do that stretch more often than you would your calf muscle. So just listening to your body and working within the parameters and time that you have. And our 10th and final tip is to supplement any aerobic workout, treadmill or outdoors, that you need to have a good strength training workout. Um, it's going to optimize longevity and strength, and bone health. And so you are looking to check out my playlist here. I have a special one just for those of you looking at a beginner level, beginner active level, active level. You'll find everything you need here. Wish you a great day and lots of great workouts.